Now weapons seem to level up really slowly in Black Ops Cold War, so today I'm going to be sharing the fastest ways to level up your guns by getting more weapon XP in Season 5 of Cold War and Warzone. I'm sure most of you are here either because you want to level up your weapons to unlock camo challenges or because you want better attachments to get a better class setup with the weapon you're using. So I'm going to cover the fastest ways to level up your weapons in Cold War multiplayer and zombies and also Warzone and with some of these methods you can potentially max out the weapon level for a gun in just one game. So stay tuned to to know how to do that so you don't miss out on any important tips but if you do want to jump to a specific part of the video there will be timestamps in the description for a specific mode of the game if you only want to like play zombies or multiplayer or whatever i also have playlists and videos for camo guides best class setups weapon unlock guides ethereum crystal farming methods leveling up tiers fast and more in the description and with cards on screen in case you guys are interested in any of those videos which show you how to improve at the game i'm also currently doing a cod points giveaway for the season 5 battle pass which you can enter again by visiting the video on screen or the link in the description there'll be rules there as well without further ado let's get into these tips so to start out we're going to be talking about multiplayer then zombies and then finally warzone and then towards the end of the video we'll kind of discuss which method is best for you so for multiplayer fireteam dirty bomb is still currently the best method for getting weapon xp as in low weapon levels each kill will get you to the next weapon level whereas in higher weapon levels several kills will be enough to get you to the next weapon level when you're using double weapon xp weapon xp is really high in this game mode you need to get as many kills as possible so I recommend when you spawn in from the air scout out groups of enemies or easy solo kills or signs of activity around the map to find how to get easy kills especially if you can like drop down and sneak up behind someone and get an easy kill without them attacking you that's really great if you can see someone running along drop down behind them and they often won't notice you now in this game mode even when taking into account the longer time played because it's a longer mode fire team dirty bomb is still more efficient than other game modes so it's definitely worth playing this one now I always get a lot of questions about about this mode saying where can I find fire team dirty bomb if you go to the main list of game modes on the multiplayer menu you'll see fire team if you click on that you'll either have at the moment it's fire team mosh pit or fire team elimination if you go in fire team mosh pit one of the modes which you can play is fire team dirty bomb however it doesn't really have to be the dirty bomb mode there are other fire team modes and whatever one you play I believe they all have very similar weapon XP earn rates give them a try obviously it's not for everyone because with weapons that don't do as much distance so for example SMGs and pistols and possibly shotguns as well it's more difficult to get kills than with longer range weapons because it's quite a big map if you don't like fire team dirty bomb or any of those fire team modes it doesn't matter because there's lots of other modes that you can do instead however these might not quite be as good so you just have to bear that in mind so one other method you could do is playing a mode like free for all domination TDM or kill confirmed but in the hardcore playlist it's ideal for weapons that are difficult to use without good attachments you could also even use blueprints you've unlocked for a specific weapon that you're trying to level up which comes with built-in attachments so you don't have to struggle leveling up the base weapon with zero attachments and in hardcore as long as you hit them once or twice you'll get the kill so it makes it much easier getting kills basically another way and this is probably my preferred method outside of fire team would be mosh pits for small maps so for example currently in the game we've got the nuke jacked 24 7 playlist which is live at the time of making this video and in nuke town if you sort of hang around the high flow areas of the map so for example the house window to the middle area of the map or push into the enemy spawns you can get a lot of kills fast and and hardcore mode on these small map mosh pits like Nuketown is fantastic for weapon XP as well. So I highly recommend either going to a hardcore version of another mode or a small map mosh pit and ideally hardcore as well because like I say kills are easier with the weapon if you haven't leveled it up and like I say you can also use blueprints as well so that's kind of my suggestion outside of fire team finally I just wanted to talk about a few little boosts you can do in multiplayer to get even more weapon XP with your weapon so the first thing is to get assists now obviously you don't want to aim for assists but getting assists awards you the same amount of weapon XP as getting kills so even if you don't think you can kill them putting a bullet or two into them is useful and hopefully a teammate will come along and clean them up for you to give you that assist outside of that you can also try and get more exciting kills with the weapon and what I mean by that is types of kills where you earn medals normally for it so for example headshots long shots going on streaks like bloodthirsties or merciless getting rapid kills like double or triple kills all of those things will earn you a medal and because of that you'll get more weapon XP than just a basic kill so that's everything for multiplayer but let's jump straight into the zombie strategy and in particular we're going to talk about outbreak first and then one of the round based zombies maps so for outbreak what i recommend doing is going around the world killing as many zombies as you can find obviously you can be guided by your uov which shows you where they are once you've cleared all the zombies in one region go to the next and so on and i would definitely recommend using vehicles to get to these zombie hotspots faster rather than just running around the map don't avoid the edges of the map either these are quite good there's lots of enemies in the corners and the edges of the map so definitely make use of that and i'd also recommend 
recommend making use of the insta kill power ups or ring of fire or anything like that to get the kills faster but I'd avoid collecting nuke power ups as this destroys zombies. I also believe that if you gun butt the zombies or if you've upgraded it it will be sort of melleeing with the knife. I believe this doesn't count as the weapon killing them so you won't actually get weapon XP for it so just try and shoot them or hit them if it's a melee weapon but don't go trying to melee them with a normal weapon as you won't get weapon XP for it. You also want to try and hunt down as many special or boss zombies as possible as they give more weapon XP than the standard zombies so if you see that red demon icon on the map you'll know there's a special or elite enemy nearby and obviously you want to go take it down as it will give you more weapon XP. And also you want to try to complete the world events on the map as these are great for attracting lots more zombies so we've got the dragon event so you need to get kills within sort of a ring of fire and you want to fuel a dragon rocket to launch the dragon into the sky and lots of zombies will run at you while you're trying to charge up this rocket. The next type of world event is the hunt hordes and for this you need to kill all the normal zombies, special zombies and elites to get loads more weapon XP and a free perk. You want to go to the skull icons on the map and interact with a dead body to play an audio log and then go to where the skull icon has moved. There'll be a blue beam of light in the sky and that'll be where the horde is. The third type of world event is the opening golden chests and for this by opening the chest you'll spawn a lot of elite zombies and normal zombies so be careful that you're fully prepared and you've leveled up your gun or you've bought perks or whatever. There's another more recent type of event they've added where you have to kill Order which is that giant earth looking boss and basically as well as killing Order itself every time you try and do damage it will cause lots of zombies to spawn and it will shoot lots of hellhounds and so on at you so this is quite a good one for weapon xp as well but just bear in mind that the killing order objective will never be on the first round it will only be from the second round onwards and it's not guaranteed to spawn so you'll only get it sometimes but yeah and the other main one is the fury crystal event and basically what you need to do is you need to go up to sort of an orange looking crystal you need to shoot all the crystals at each location it will keep moving around in a specific region you need to keep shooting them before the time runs out and in the meantime lots of zombies will also spawn to try and attack you obviously it's great for weapon xp as well i definitely recommend trying to do these world events and just bear in mind that you'll get thousands of points on the first map so once you get enough pack a punch your weapon buy any perks like speed cola or juggernaut or anything like that and you also want to use the salvage collected to upgrade your weapon damage at the weapon and armor station once you've done all these things you want to go for the main objective so the best objective type is probably defend as there's lots of zombies run at you from all directions while you protect a zombie head which which is an insane amount of kills or weapon XP. There's other good ones as well, like hold out, escort. There's also the one where you've got to charge up two rockets, I think. And there's also sort of the one where you've got to eliminate the elite zombie, but this is not as good, but they're all fairly decent. So just go for the objective as quickly as possible and kill all the zombies and elites as quickly as you can for that objective. And when you've killed all the zombies on the first region, you want to walk to the next map and repeat the process again. But bear in mind that this time, only kill the zombies on your way to the objective for about five or so minutes, five to 10 minutes, something like that, before you actually start the objective and complete it after you complete it maybe go for a few more minutes of kills making sure to upgrade your weapons and perks along the way then you want to walk to the third difficulty level and complete the process again but this time literally only kill the zombies you come across when going for the objective then complete the main objective and i think the important thing to note is that in zombies the higher the round the less weapon xp per kill and obviously they'll have more health and more armor so this is the same for outbreak therefore it's not worth going past difficulty level three obviously the reason why i'm saying get less kills on the second level is because you get less weapon XP than the first and on the third it's just about worth it to go for the main objective and some kills but it's probably not worth to run around the whole map and get loads of kills as the zombies have a lot more health and you get less weapon XP per zombie and then like I say after level three it's probably not worth it so at that point I'd recommend after you complete the objective on the third level choose to exfil kill all the zombies and elites and then your game will end and you'll want to start another match and repeat the process all over again so that's the outbreak strategy but there's also one for round based zombies as well now the best map in my opinion still I think for this is D Machine. Now it's not quite as good as what it was in the past as I think they've changed a few things. I think the zombies come at you a little bit slower and I think they've reduced the round at which weapon XP goes down for killing zombies but I still think that the penthouse strategy is pretty decent. I'm sure a lot of you guys know what it is, but I'll quickly explain it for anyone that doesn't. Basically, you want to spawn in, kill zombies as fast as possible on rounds one and two, and then at the end of the round two, you want to buy the left door in the first room, turn right, buy the debris at the top of the stairs, head straight ahead, and up the ramp to reach the top floor of the building, and head to the back, and this is known as the penthouse area. You then want to sit in the corner that I show you and shoot the zombies as fast as possible. This strategy is ideal because in the penthouse region the zombies will spawn much faster than elsewhere meaning you can get kills more quickly or progress through the rounds faster. And zombies can only spawn behind the concrete barricade to your left or walk across or climb up over the wall of the narrow walkway region 
of the rooftop sort of straight ahead so they can only come from the left or straight ahead basically so it's not like you're gonna be bombarded from all directions just make sure you avoid picking up the nuke power up unless you absolutely need it to survive as this will obviously take away the kills you get from your weapon and it means you'll get less weapon xp overall similarly like i said before don't gumbutt or melee the zombies with your knife only shoot them and make use of insta kills when you have them so you can kill hordes of zombies even faster you should also equip the ring of fire field upgrade so that when there's a large horde of zombies you can use the ring of fire to do more damage and kill them much faster i believe in the past it worked better if you played with a team of people each person would use their ring of fire once at a time and then as soon as yours runs out you'd let someone else do theirs and yours will be recharging i believe they may have patch that now and made that more difficult so unless i'm mistaken i think if you're standing in someone else's ring of fire while yours is still charging it won't count or it won't recharge um, i might be wrong if i'm wrong then obviously go ahead and still do it but i believe that that part of the strategy has gone but if you're definitely playing in solo or you can play with friends anyway but if you're playing in solo so you use your ring of fire and then obviously wait for it to recharge and use it again now when you run out of ammo you can obviously look at for the max ammo power-ups um, but zombies will also drop ammo packs or if you need to restock ammo then drop down onto the middle floor then run down the stairs turn right buy the ammo from the chest and then head back upstairs to the penthouse again and this is best done sort of towards the end of the round but it doesn't really matter too much and like i said after a certain round the weapon xp goes down i believe this is sort of round 12 to 15 so it's no longer worth after that point staying in the match therefore i recommend you sort of exfil by around 12 to 15 probably 15 at max but it's up to you guys and it might also be worth heading over to pack a punch machine upgrading your weapon or buying some perks before you exfil and then like I say killing zombies until sort of round 12 or 13 and then after that you can start thinking about exfilling by round 15 at the latest I'd say now when you exfil you want to kill as many zombies as possible at the landing site with your upgraded weapon you can also use the ring of fire to again get more kills but if you're struggling you can buy the chopper gunner score streak and call that in and you can use this to clear the remaining zombies so that if you exfil you get more xp and ethereum crystals in the process if you need it so it's kind of worth overlapping that with getting crystals that's everything for zombies obviously the malder totem is okay as well if you stay in the rooftop area for a while but after a little while it gets much more difficult to get kills in that area especially because you can't upgrade your weapon or turn on the power or get perks or anything so that can be okay as well for training but it's not probably quite as good as the machine now let's move on to warzone i think so in warzone you want to get as many kills as you can with your weapon in the pre-game lobby especially plunder as you can get your custom loadout as these count towards your weapon levels you want to ideally play modes like plunder or battle royale but i think plunder is probably best as you get infinite lives custom loads out and no gas cloud or anything like that i'd recommend going to high flow areas of the map so for example prison superstore storage town new points of interest etc and get as many kills as you can with your weapon so i'd recommend dropping into a high flow area getting some kills if possible then complete as many contracts as you can in the match you can obviously either go for contracts or kills whatever you'd prefer but i think contra but considering obviously you can die a lot in plunder especially in places like storage town unless you're really really good i'd recommend probably leaning more towards contracts if you can obviously if you're playing with teammates what would work even better is if you go for the kills in storage town while they're getting you a bunch of contracts done because everyone in your team will get the contract weapon xp so that's probably the best thing if if a teammate does it with you but obviously that's more difficult to coordinate and if you're not playing with friends then obviously it's more difficult but on that point if anyone needs to team up feel free to see if anyone in the comment section of this video is interested i'm sure there'll be someone so you might be able to find someone to help you with that but yeah you can either go for contracts or kills probably better contracts if you're just doing it solo but obviously go for kills where you can as well what i recommend doing is grabbing a helicopter or an atv or quad bike or anything like that go around the map collect as many supply run or recon contracts as you can supply runs are probably better as they're easier and quicker and after you pick up the supply run contract you have two minutes to get to the buy station to complete the contract you don't have to actually get out of your vehicle you can just drive right up to it into the circle to complete it alternatively recon contracts are good so you can pick one up then go to the area instructed to and stay by the upload station to capture the objective this then shows you where the next circle will be on the map if you're playing battle royale but obviously we're probably doing this in plunder so recons are okay but obviously i think they're a little bit more time consuming they're a bit more annoying whereas supply runs are really good and quick but obviously a lot of people go for supply runs so if, if there's none in your area then it might be worth doing something else like a bounty contract or a recon contract or anything like that doing contracts is great as it can be much more efficient than getting kills especially if you're just not quite as good of a warzone player obviously the more contracts you complete the bigger the bonus you get and therefore the more weapon xp you get each time because after you complete a contract your contract bonus goes up which means the next contract you do you get more cash weapon xp etc then the bonus goes up again and you get more cash weapon xp etc so the more contracts you do in the game the better you know with with certain weapons at certain weapon levels i was literally getting one weapon level 
before each time I was doing a supply run contract. I think I had the double weapon XP token on, but regardless, that was still really good. Like each time I did a contract, another weapon level, and I'll just keep bashing out these contracts one after the other. So it's really, really good. Don't miss out on it. It's a very good strategy, kind of underestimated as well by a lot of people. And obviously the final thing is just to be sure to kill any enemies you see along the way with your weapon. And also the weapon you want to level up, make sure that's the one you're holding when you complete the contracts, because if you're holding your other weapon, like your secondary, that's the weapon that will get your weapon XP. Whereas if you're holding the primary weapon, that's the weapon you get weapon XP on. So make sure you're holding the right weapon, or if someone else is doing it for you, make sure they tell you when they're going to complete it so you're holding the right weapon. Otherwise you'll be getting weapon XP for the wrong weapon. We're going to talk about two quick other strategies as well in Warzone. So one of them is obviously Rebirth. It's great as it's a small map, fast pace, more gunfights, and it's a similar strategy to Battle Royale and Plunder. You obviously want to try and get your loadout and then get as many kills as you can or complete contracts, which is fine. But they're smaller matches. Obviously there's more time between the games, so I'd recommend maybe not doing this one as games will be quicker and you'll often struggle to do as many contracts in the time. Plus you have to obviously get your loadout, which is annoying. Another great method, which unfortunately isn't in the game right now, it was in the game at the end of season four, but if it comes back, I definitely recommend doing this method in Warzone as it's really, really good. And that is Payload. So that's been in for a little while, just before the end of season four, and it was really good for weapon XP. Even if you were to sit somewhere stationary, you'd get a lot of weapon XP with that weapon, literally just for doing nothing, because as the payload advances, your team gets more weapon XP, or if you're on the other team and you're trying to block them, as you push their payload back, you get more weapon XP and so on. So it's really, really good for weapon XP, even if you just do literally nothing. But obviously if you combine that with getting kills, it's really, really good. And as it's a smaller area of map, you don't have to run across the whole map to find people and every time you spawn it will give you a sprinting bonus so you can sprint really fast back to where you were when you died so this is definitely a really great mode so if they've got payload around you can either sit stationary and it shouldn't kick you out of the game it should just give you weapon xp for just doing nothing just because your team's working on the objective or you can do that plus get the kills if you're actually playing the game so either way works i definitely recommend that if it comes back but obviously it's not in the game at the moment so we don't know when it will return it might be a little while who knows so that's kind of the strategy for Warzone. Let's now talk about some other quick boosts and other methods, and then we'll talk about which method is best at the end of the video. So the other methods you can use, obviously there's double weapon XP weekends. These are quite common, so take advantage of these when they're around. There's also double weapon XP tokens, which you can get from free PlayStation packs on the PlayStation Store if you play on PlayStation, obviously. There's also tokens in the For You section of the store that often has free bundles, including double weapon XP tokens, so definitely make use of those. Leveling up the battle pass to certain tiers can as well, and obviously if you need help with leveling up the battle pass then obviously feel free to check out my video with that i made one recently for season five and very recently during season four they actually added the ability to earn xp and weapon xp tokens every day just by completing the first daily challenge for that day so complete these as often as you can as quickly as you can do the easiest objective you won't always get weapon xp tokens you might get xp tokens and there's no telling how good or bad the token will be like it could be 15 minutes it could be half an hour or 45 minutes or an hour or whatever also if you have any double weapon xp tokens that are specific to warzone so if they were originally unlocked in modern warfare say these won't show up when you're actually playing black ops cold war but if you head over to warzone activate these tokens and then jump back on cold war you can use these secret tokens to level up weapons even faster by having more double weapon xp available when the double weapon xp weekends aren't around so that's a little tip that if you're just looking at cold war you may have some tokens that are, are warzone specific you'd have to jump over to that game to activate them and then jump back into cold war or stay playing warzone so a lot of people don't know that so definitely keep that in mind the other final main boost is if you're on playstation playing with a teammate either on playstation or through crossplay will give you a 25 percent bonus so pair that with the other tips it will allow you to level up your guns really really fast so definitely bear that in mind it's really really useful so overall kind of which method is best obviously it depends on how good of a player you are if you're better at a certain mode or another but i think in general the main good methods are fire team dirty bomb if you're in multiplayer in warzone it would have to be doing contracts or or getting kills or combine them or playing payload that's really really good payload's probably better if that mode's around than plunder and in zombies it's probably outbreak if you can survive to several rounds otherwise it would be the penthouse strategy or another similar map but overall which method is best it's really difficult to say i think fire team dirty bomb is definitely one of the best and the warzone contract or payload method is probably the second best but zombies is probably very close behind that as well the thing is with zombies obviously is that it's one continuous game mode you don't have to wait for the game to end and the next one to start so if you're playing long 
longer modes, it's, it's more efficient, but obviously you have to bear in mind that the weapon XP per zombie goes down as the round goes up. So these are the fastest ways to level up your weapons currently in Cold War and Warzone. If you found these tips helpful, leaving a like on the video would be much appreciated so that other people can find the video too. And if you have any other tips I didn't mention, make sure to share them with us in the comment section. And as I previously mentioned, I make tons of other useful multiplayer zombies and Warzone challenge guides. So for example, for camos, DLC weapon unlocks, best class setups, guides on how to level up your battle pass or weapons, etc. And how to earn more Ethereum crystals in zombies. So any of this sounds good to you guys, hitting the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon next to it to turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any other videos would be greatly appreciated. Thank you all so much for watching the video and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.